Hi everybody watching at home, this is Walking and Talking with Phoenix. Today, we're going to be discussing, we ain't nothing but mammals, right? So, I was at work, and I was talking to a girl about this video that I watched last night. Uh, it was an hour-long presentation, a speech delivered by a man very well. Um, and it was all about, you know, veganism and vegetarianism, and how it's fundamentally cruel and unethical and unhealthy and unnatural for human beings who apparently are omnivores, are not omnivores, herbivores, to act like carnivores and eat meat. That we, you know, and the whole talks about how we are not biologically designed to digest meat, uh, to chew meat, based on our, you know, the fact that we've got herbivores intestines, and the way that we chew, apparently, with the grinding motion, can only be the way that a herbivore chews. If we were carnivores or omnivores, we would be up down like that and just ripping and swallowing. But the fact that we can grind means that we have the herbivore structure of being able to grind fruit and nuts and stuff like that. Um, and the other point he mentioned was the difference in intestines. Pretty much if you've got the short, shorter intestines then you're a, you're a carnivore because the idea is that you don't want meat rotting inside your stomach. You want to get it out quicker, you know. Whereas the longer intestines belong to the herbivores so that they can actually digest, get more nutrients, you know, digest properly all the nuts and fruit that they that they devour. So there are two reasons, you know. There's, it's quite a compelling talk. There are good points raised. I won't go into it too much, but that's just some idea. And I was trying to discuss all this with with my colleague at work, this new girl from Estonia. Very very nice girl. Very beautiful girl. She's a Leo. So I think you know, there's a bit of ego there, a bit of pride, a bit hard-headed. She might not, you know warm up to different ideas that oppose her ideas too quickly. So when I was trying to tell her about that, you know, how we're not actually meant to eat meat, and I was trying to explain these biological differences and the idea that, you know, if you take a baby and put the baby in a crib, you know, and you put a fluffy bunny rabbit in one corner and you put an apple in the other, you watch, and every single time, you know, the baby will instinctively end up going for the apple as a source of sustenance, you know? And that's the idea that, you know, it's all about instincts, you know, animals don't need to watch, a cat doesn't need to watch his mother or father hunt a bird in order for it to instinctively pounce upon a bird, execute its prey, and start devouring that fucker. It's ingrained in its design, the instinct to survive, to eat, and it just picks up naturally, you know, what it's supposed to eat, you know? And that's the thing, if you put a baby in a pen with any animal, chances are you will never see the baby eat the animal and play with the fruit. You'll see the, the baby human playing with the, the bunny rabbit or the animal and eating the fruit. And I was trying to just convey this point and relay it from the video I watched. It's basically about, you know, how we are instinctively herbivores and we just acquire this taste from birth for meat because it's stuffed down our throat. With all the, and the conditioning behind how it's all fine and dandy to eat meat and animals are unequal and they don't think like us and they don't process pain the same way so it's okay all this propaganda and basically she said oh well that's that's stupid you know it's stupid the whole thing with the baby of course the baby's gonna eat the fruit because you know it has to learn to eat the meat and blah 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 you know if no one shows it why would it eat the bunny and I'm like well if it's instinct it would, just like any animal. Every animal knows from birth instinctively what it needs to do in order to survive. Sure, in terms of acquiring, in terms of defending, some things the parents are there to guide them, you know, and lead by example. But generally, if you leave an animal alone in the wild, they will pick it up. And at this point, and this is the point of the whole talk right now, my friend and colleague said that, you know, well, we're not animals. We're not animals, you can't compare us. And I think it was a bit of a translation issue. I tried to convey my point because we were coming from two very different ends. I was discussing the physiological similarities between all biological organisms, especially in the mammalian kingdom, and how we all, in principle, have the pretty much the same design. We all fuck and eat and shit and breathe. And, you know, they experiment on animals for a reason because you can actually cross-reference the effects of certain things on certain animals to humans and that was 
that was how I was coming across. I was talking from a physiological sense in comparison, whereas my friend and colleague was coming from a, a psychological sense. So she kept saying, oh, well, you know, I think it's, it's rude and I don't like your attitude saying that we're all animals. You know, some people can be animals, but we have a choice to be better than that and to spiritually evolve and, you know, we're more consciously aware and all this. And I tried to explain, I tried to explain that, yeah, I agree with you. We have uh, very different thought processes and much more de highly developed brain and highly developed aptitude, aptitudes that separate us from the animal kingdom in a significant way, but it doesn't separate us entirely and we're always going to be connected. I mean, what? Are we going to take a creationism perspective and say that humans are just created from nothing and they've got no ties, no relevance, uh, no, you know, nothing, no connection to the animal kingdom? Well, we're going to say they just came out of nowhere and they didn't gradually evolve through a series of organisms before them that weren't human? We all know evolution. I think it's safe to say if you have half a brain and some rationality cranking in that brain, you can see the principles and the reliability of the idea of evolution, even the evidence for it, uh, over the idea of creationism, the world being created in seven days, humans being created as these superior beings, totally separate and different and higher uh, than, than all the other animals. And this is basically, you know, I don't, I don't get that point of view. So I was trying, trying my hardest to communicate this idea that, you know, physiologically there's, there's comparisons. You know, you can, you can learn a lot about humans by looking at the way animals behave, especially, you know, orangutans and all our certain monkeys, but boas. So, and she couldn't understand what I was talking about, or maybe she didn't want to understand and she interpreted it one way and she just wanted to stick with that interpretation and just defend it, just so she could have something to fight against and conquer and prove herself above. I don't know, but it's not really about that. It was a bit frustrating, so I was like, I had to repeat myself, you're right, consciously speaking and spiritually, we're not animals unless we choose to be. Physiologically speaking, looking at the vehicle we have, you know what I'm saying, the vehicle, it, it stems from a history of development which has ties to the animal kingdom. You know, you shouldn't judge your spirituality or take offense at someone judging your consciousness because they're talking about your body being an animal's body. Your body is not your spirituality nor your consciousness. It's simply a vehicle or a mask for you to function through and express yourself through. So the fact that someone would make such a comparison between the body and the soul and then take offense, like one is talking about the soul when they say you're an animal, is a little bit contradictory of this enlightened mindset. If you were enlightened, you wouldn't take offense, you'd recognize that we are all mammals. We're all animals. The difference is we're domesticated. Domesticated and conditioned to develop our aptitudes in very different ways. Just in the same way that you can domesticate certain monkeys, birds, to communicate and speak and behave in ways that they never would, never would under normal circumstances. So it's all really about conditioning and domestication that separates us in a, in a great way from our predecessors. And even if you look at previous human, humans, cavemen, even the people in the medieval times, and compared them psychologically, all their different aptitudes to where we are now, you would see great, great differences. You know, and one could even say, well, they're animals in comparison. Just like one could say that we're animals in comparison to somebody, let's say, I don't know, in 500 years time, who's at that next level of development. You know what I'm saying? So there's always gonna be jumps, there's always gonna be differences for better or worse. The point of this conversation here, you know, we ain't nothing but mammals. Humans tend to, to you know, champion and pay a high premium on the idea that humans are the superior species above the rest, the superior mammal above all other mammals. And to this assertion, I can only ask, what is the criteria in which you're evaluating, you know, who's higher, who's better? I mean, yeah, we can dominate better, we can control the environment, all those things crawling around in it, you know, that we can do. But is that really the criteria in which we're, we're gauging the higher, more evolved species? I mean, last I checked, 
the reason the world's in such a harsh state, besides factors outside of our control, is greatly due to the human's contribution over time. This whole species, in a lot of ways, we have more in common with parasites than any other mammal does on this earth. If you look at the way other mammals operate in their respective kingdoms, all the other animals, there seems to be a general flow, natural flow, everything works together in harmony, and there's no real huge imbalances. You know, even people say, well, what about termites? Termites break things down, you know, they're, they're agents of change, which is natural and healthy. Humans like to build things that stay fixed through time against nature. And because termites break these things down, introducing change, we call them a nuisance. But it's only relative to our set ways of having things fixed and maintained over time, which isn't really as natural. So, I don't know, in many ways I could say that humans are the least superior, they're the most inferior uh, species compared to all other animals. Really, if you look at how much we are contributing positively and how much we are taking away negatively and contributing negatively to, to the world and all its inhabitants. I'd say that, yeah, sure, we're very crafty, we're very tricky, very clever and in innovative. And, you know, the ingenuity we have is, is impressive. But what we use our ingenuity for, what we use all our tact for, and all our genius, you know, I can't help but think it's madness. There's nothing really great about it overall. It's not really doing more good for the world overall. And it's actually making things worse. You know, the principles by which we are compelled and by which we act, that we operate on, our motives, our, mo you know, our motivations, our values, you know, as much as we like to idealize ourselves as being more superior in all actuality, when you weigh up all the walks against all the talks, you will find that we are stomping this ground into oblivion, this earth into oblivion, its creatures into oblivion, you know, the, the water, the food, the air, we're fucking it all. Even though we do have the ability to vastly improve all these things and work in a more harmonious fashion with everything else, we don't. We seem like we're disconnected from the rest of nature, from the rest of life's creatures, from the earth itself. Like, who needs the environment to survive, right? And so in that way, you could say that, you know, we are the least natural, we are the most separate and therefore the most inferior because we're not up on the ship of nature, the ship of the earth and what's good for everything in a cyclic system, but we're in our own destructive and closed system and that doesn't really seem superior. That seems quite retarded by all definition, completely deviating from the norm in a detrimental way. Anyway, that's my fruitful thought on that. Feel free to uh, comment on your own thoughts. You know, do you believe in evolution? Do you believe in creationism? Do you think we're separate to the animal kingdom? No, we're not mammals. 